All right, guys. I got another uh, uh, mill syrup in today. Actually, I picked up if you uh, look back a video or so. Depends on when I uploaded it. Where I got the 92. Um, I bought another one from PSA. Actually, I bought the 92 on a Thursday. Um, I was debating on back and forth between it and this one. And I sat straight up in the bed on Saturday and said, I really think I should need to buy that firearm. So I went ahead and uh, dropped my order. It only took a few days for it to come from the um, warehouse to the local FFL. No big deal. But this is what I got for $279. Well, you know, same packaging. You get some brown paper. You get a nice little Palmetto State Armory lock. And it comes with a California warning. Um, I'm assuming because this is a single stack magazine that uh, only holds uh, like eight rounds, seven, eight rounds. I haven't checked. I have to think. I'm pretty sure it holds eight, but we'll see. And then you have the bubble wrapped firearm. Now, what we have here is a Beretta 1951. If any of you know anything about the, per, the Beretta series firearms, this is kind of the granddaddy of them all. Or, this is the granddaddy of the P series, the uh, P92s and such. Um, it is a single stack, so it is very thin, very comfortable in the hand. It does have the European style mag we have the eight round heel spurred um, magazine it has the uh, cross bolt safety that does not work until you cock the hammer you put the safety on it's just like on some of your uh, regular shotguns and rifles it's just a push button push it in from the right side it's safe um, and it's the way it's cut out you can actually just pop it in with your thumb so it's a nice little gun um, pretty clean uh, does have some minor uh, imperfections you know slide wear holster wear slide wear it's got a little bit of light rusting in the serrations uh, and inside the gun has some uh, some credits it need you know got some crap and dirt and stuff inside these grips but that's natural you know if you've got a gun that you're going to shoot and these were italian police trade-ins yeah these were carried um up until they i think this was actually made for the army they tried to get an army contract and the army didn't adopt it but the navy used this forever uh, i think up until like the when the beretta 92s come out which the army adopted it, but the police force used these a lot. Uh, it's a really comfortable in the hand firearm. And a funny thing is, when I was a kid, I actually had a dart gun that was made in this style. I don't know if it was the you know Model 70 or Model 80 series like the Cheetah, but it was basically the same style. So. I've always had this style firearm in my head. Um, I really wanted, uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen the um, PPKs, um, the Bursas, the little single stack 380s. They have this same kind of design frame with the safety up here. Um, I've always liked that, but I always wanted one in 9mm. And this is as close as it can get. And like I said, this burst what you'll see as the 92 and in fact I got the 92 right here I can show you here's the 92 and here's the 1951 you can see the difference in the thickness she's a slim girl where this one's a little chunkier 
Um, very comfortable in the hand. This would actually probably be a very good carry gun if it wasn't for this funky cross bolt safety, but you know, it has its place in history. You know, um, they have various models of this that I think the Hill one that Egypt had and the Tariq that um, Iraq used. Uh, same firearm, just manufactured a little bit different, had a little bit differences, but basically the same. Some of them are called the Brigadier. This is the 1951. Like I said, compared to the 92, they're pretty similar in size, except for one single stack. One's double stack, so you do have a thinner pistol breaks down pretty much like all the rest of your 92 series uh, except for this one doesn't have a button on this side that you have to push in and flip down basically you have a notch that you pull back to and you rotate that up and then your slide will come off like I said Inside, I, had, I have not cleaned these guns. I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what they look like before I did anything. They're pretty clean. Um, they're not got a whole lot of wear. You know, they've got some slide wear, which is what you're going to have on a gun if you shoot it. Um, has the guide rod and spring. Has the uh, locking block. Um, barrel design. It was, you know, pretty much came out on like the P38. But the rifling is not as good on this one. Oh, it's really dirty, so it's kind of hard to tell. But uh, I think the serial numbers on this one is probably going to match because it doesn't appear to be rebarreled. So, yeah. This one is a all matching numbers. The barrel serial number and the frame serial number match. And you know, like I said, they're got the same import marks. But I thought that was pretty neat that it actually has the the correct barrel the matching barrel with the frame. That's pretty neat because like I said a lot of these were one of two things. They were either used a lot as far as carried a lot. You just put this back together. You just pull it back to the notch. It's hard to do around the camera. And then just flip your lever down. Um, they were either carried a lot and just had a lot of holster wear, or if they were shot a lot, they usually were rebarreled, rearsenaled. But this one is all original, so that's pretty neat. Like I said, the safety only works when the hammer's cocked. You put the safety on, nothing, and you can just flip it off with your thumb. All in all, it's going to be a nice range gun. Like I said, i got to clean all the Cosmoline out of them because... <laughs> They are nasty, dirty, not necessarily uh, dirty, but they have packing grease in them. Um, and we'll go from there. I got some ideas about this one. I may or may not refinish this one. I may or may not refinish this one. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean them up and then we're gonna get to the range and just shoot some nines out of them. I figured it was high time. I never owned her. Well, let me rephrase that. I have owned a few 9mm. I never really kept them. I traded them off. I've got several 40s uh, and I have conversion barrels for my 40s, but I do reload for 9mm so I don't have to worry about getting the uh, paying the high price for ammo. I can make my own. So I figured it was high time I had me a 9mm range gun. Or, in fact, two now. So. 
All right. Don't be afraid of these guns, guys. I mean, these uh, Italian mill serps, they're still in really good condition. Like I said, they're running out. I bought this one. I jumped on the website, ordered it, 279 and I've already seen where some of the other websites are actually jacking this particular pistol up. They were, as of mid-end August, um, 279 and I'm seeing some places jump them up to 350 to $400 for this mill syrup. So the prices are crazy. Um, and you know as well as I do, as soon as they're sold out, the prices are just going to go up because the supply is going to be so limited. Same way with Mosin Nagants. Used to get them for $69. Uh, and now if you can find one in decent shape, they want $350 for them. So I figured I wanted to go ahead and jump on these and get them in the collection. And we'll go from there. All right, I'm going.